To you by Miller Lite and Luther Auto. And now, to kick off your NFL weekend, this is Vikings Live. Hey, what's going on? How about some high fives at SoFi this weekend and maybe a Minnesota Vikings victory? This evening, you get a chance to meet Christian Darasaw. That is our featured guest on Vikings Live, hosted by... Bonjour, Hobie RT. Como ça va, Paul Allen? Thank you very much for joining us here on Vikings Live <laughs> as we get you ready for that big game coming up Sunday between the Vikings and the Los Angeles Chargers, along with Ron Johnson and Courtney Cronin of ESPN. I am Hobie RT. And guys, this team, this Vikings team with five losses to begin the season, all five losses by seven points or less. Ron, in your estimation, just how far off is this Vikings team as we approach the midway point of the season? Well, you take the Browns game out of there, it's even less. Yeah. I mean, it's I think it was like 3-1, 4, and 3 or something like that for those other four games. Uh, that's crazy. I mean, that's crazy to be that close. And, and you look at passer rating versus QBR, and I did a little bit of deep diving in today, and I don't know why I went to that sinkhole. But when you look at QBR and Kirk Cousins being like 55.3, you realize his play right now is just above average. It's not great, mm -hmm. but it's not bad. And that's the problem. You got Teddy Bridgewater is a 50.2. And so that's where I look at this team. Kirk Cousins has to play better in those key situations. Yeah, and I think that Justin Jefferson kind of explained the mood of this team pretty, you know, pretty succinct. He said it's frustrating right now because the toughest losses are the ones that come down to the wire in that he felt that they had played pretty good up until the fourth quarter in Baltimore. And his way to get themselves out of a rut, one thing I took from that is – Put points on the board, duh. Not be conservative, so take a look at that overtime drive mm -hmm. and the way that they botched that. Uh, and just try to go up and score. Capitalize off turnovers. I mean, think about how they haven't been able to do that over the last four games, getting just three points off turnovers. Well, this team is 3-5, and five, dealing with COVID issues mm -hmm. as well, as well as the legal issues of Dalvin Cook. He and an ex-girlfriend, as we've known and documented over the last week or so, uh, throwing some serious allegations at one another. That is a civil lawsuit that is pending right now. Uh, here's more from Cook on the distraction that he's trying to prevent from creating with this Vikings team. I'm going to try to you know, walk that straight line, but you know, bumps and bruises come through, you know, life, and that's how you handle it. You know, I've been through a lot of tough things in my life, and, you know, I got my head up high, knowing that the truth will come out. And, you know, I hate being a distraction to the team, but I know those guys, you know, got my back a thousand percent. And Dalvin Cook said yesterday that was where that sound was from when he met with the media. But, Courtney, he is positive that he is going to play on Sunday. Yeah. What is up with the situation yeah. from how you can tell it? He's right practiced every day this week. We are completely under the indication that he will play in Los Angeles. And the reason for that is because he's not going to be moved onto the commissioner's exempt list. A league official told me that because this is a civil complaint, that doesn't trigger C&E. Like, now, if this was a criminal charge, mm -hmm. kind of like what we saw with Jeff Glad, earlier in the year had he actually like been around he would have been on the commissioner's exempt list that's a completely different story but because this is a civil lawsuit and these things drag out I don't anticipate Dalvin Cook missing any time and he even said that too when he was asked are you worried about any sort of further repercussions mm -hmm. of this and missing games he said that he was not and also, Ron, you look at Dalvin Cook playing the game of football. They could really use him this weekend, too, because the Chargers have the worst run defense in the NFL. Yeah, you look at the 161 yards a game they're giving up. The key is they're not run fitting. Like, they're missing tackles, and their run fits are horrible. When you look at a guy like Christian Derisaw being able to be that second guy on the edge, you look at probably Mason Cole uh, being able to pull along and get to that linebacker, that's where they're going to need Dalvin Cook because him versus Alexander Madison is just not the same when it comes to reading those keys and get to that second level. And you mentioned the passing game, Ron, just a little bit earlier. Kirk Cousins has thrown for under 200 yards in back-to-back -back games. This is the first time that's happened for him since he's been in a Minnesota Vikings uniform. Courtney, from your vantage point, what is just not clicking for the passing game right now that's kind of hindering it a little well, bit? Well, I think part of it, a big part of it, is how many uh, 
two high safety looks that he's facing, whether it's cover two, cover four, whatever. He has seen that on 40% of his dropbacks this season. That's 13th highest in the NFL. And he's got a 35.2 QBR, which is obviously not very good. So when you're giving him this too high shell, he's probably afraid of turning the ball over, throwing interceptions. Thus, that leads to not a very high um, you know, depth of, tar depth of target for him for not anticipating that he's going to be able to give his receivers much of a challenge, the 50-50 ball. So it's leading to more checkdowns. It's leading to when you see Tyler Conklin, C.J. Ham getting those targets yeah. over Justin Jefferson or an Adam Thielen who might be running a deep route. Like, there's a lot that goes into that that I think factors into what the defense is giving Minnesota. Kirk Cousins has to, like, he's got to grow. Like, not to use a P.J. Fleck term, but he's got to grow. Like, he's got to be able to figure out how to evolve in games. If they're not giving him that ability, like he said, I can't call a timeout because I leave that to the coaches. He said, I don't change the protection because I leave that to my offensive line and I trust him. Kurt, Peyton Manning would roll over in his soon-to-be grave at some point 50 years from now if he heard a quarterback say, I can't change the protection or I don't change the protection. That's where Kirk Cousins has to get better. You look at, and Courtney brought it up, the two-eye shell, not wanting to throw an interception. You have to have plays that crush cover two, four verticals, yeah. one guy bend, corner routes, two hitches, force those guys to sit, and then you have a receiver on two safeties. They, they have to come up with some plays that can attack cover two if that's what Kirk Cousins is seeing a ton of. Yeah, and I mean, it's, you, you have two elite receivers. You cannot yeah. give us the excuse that you only have longer developing routes, is what, you, what he mm -hmm. said during the, um, the overtime period. Where's your check down? Where's your hot? Where's your, like, somebody who can run an underneath route? You cannot tell me that Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen can't be those guys. Mm -hmm. So... I think that there's a lot of things that you can work around here. It's not just on play calling. I put a lot of that on the shoulders of the quarterback. And here is more from Justin Jefferson after that frustrating stretch of losing back-to-back -back games where the offense kind of stalled many times in the games against Dallas and also against the Ravens. It's been tough. Uh, it, these are the worst losses. You're losing by, you know, those few little points, playing our heart out and just losing at the end of the game. Um, I mean, we just got to find a way to finish the game. Uh, I feel like we, we play a, a pretty good game all the way until, you know, the end of the end of the full quarter. Uh, so we just got to find a way to get over that hump. Um, I mean, it doesn't have to be close. So uh, just putting points on the board, uh, not being conservative, and just running up the score. Good words from Coach Justin Jefferson right there. Great <laughs> game plan for the offense moving forward as they head into this game against the Chargers. But, guys, looking at that Vikings defense right now, very shorthanded right now going into that game against the Ravens. They still kind of held Lamar Jackson in check, maybe not with run defense, but they forced two turnovers from Lamar Jackson, sacked him three times. Where, where do they continue that progression, Ron, this weekend against another great quarterback? Well, one, like Jefferson said, after turnovers, they have to have a plan. You look at the Ravens' defense. They probably weren't expecting an interception either. So I guarantee, just like Ben Lieber said, the Vikings' offense was looking for their helmets and scrambling. The Ravens' defense probably was doing the same thing. Like, oh, my God, we got to go right back out there now? That's when you come out and you attack. The fact that they had a two-man route, you had man-to-man -man on the backside, tight end, and he didn't do anything but stand there. He didn't have anybody to block because his cover guy backed up. You've got to have some other stuff going and ready to go in that situation. I think the good thing is they don't have to prepare for the option this week, so that's a positive. <laughs> um, that's good. But they did play the defense majority of the DBs and linebackers were on the field for 98 snaps last week. <sighs> Call me crazy, but I don't know if four or five days is enough recovery while you are going through a lighter bit of practice this week. That seems like a lot before you have to then go to the other coast and play the Los Angeles Chargers and know that you are going to be facing a dominant passing attack. And, you know, it's not easy to pressure Justin Herbert because they max protect all the time. They have a really good offensive line. And even when they do pressure the quarterback, as other teams have found out in the past, he's able to, you know, work around that. And that's been a really big bugaboo for teams trying to contain the Los Angeles Chargers QB. And to your point, Philadelphia zero sacks last week. I don't think they, they even touched the him. Chargers. I don't think I mean, they He had them. a clean pocket pretty much all day. But when you look at these two teams, the Vikings and the Chargers, granted, the records are opposite, but it's <laughs> technically a mirror image. One team, three and five, <laughs> the other five and three. But total yards, they're right behind each other in the NFL standings. Points scored, both scoring 24 plus points per game. And points allowed very, very close to each other as well. This is a Chargers team. Ron, last week we were talking about the Ravens, how they've been able to eke out some close wins. The Chargers kind of in the same boat sitting at 5-3. and three. They had back-to-back -back losses, but got that win against Philly last week. Last second field goal to win it. 
What's your general read on L.A. coming into this one? Well, I feel like it's a team that trusts their quarterback. They're going to give him the best opportunity to keep them in games. Their defense is playing okay in the past. In the run, we've already talked about that. Uh, they're atrocious. But I think there's a team that's saying, you know what, if our quarterback can stay on the field a little bit longer, they use passes as runs. They will do a short right here. They will do a short extended pass as a handoff and let their playmakers end up one-on-one -on -one with the guy that probably and hopefully will miss a tackle. And then Herbert there, just having the pocket presence to be able to get out and know when it's time to run. And he does doesn't second guess himself. I mean, they don't have to go up against the option again, but they have to deal with a quarterback with some legs, Courtney. Yeah, and I think that's the thing. He's got this like great physical skill set, like which we said, you know, the top of the show. Brandon Staley said, "Hey, I'm going to build around this. I'm going to hire somebody mm -hmm. to build an offense around him." I mean, you can see him make throws off of his back foot with pressure around him, or when the pocket's collapsing, and he's completely unaffected by it. And then when he's able to get out of the pocket move around you know he's got some good legs that mm -hmm. come with that big physique too in that arm so I think that it's kind of that total package that comes with someone like Justin Herbert he's incredibly accurate too and he was the total package in that game against the Eagles last week and as you take a look at some of his numbers in that week against Philly check it out he was named the AFC Offensive Player of the Week and for good reason. 356 passing yards, three total touchdowns, two passes, one for a run, a 123 plus passer rating and run 80 Five percent completion rating almost at that threshold but uh, very very solid numbers from Justin Herbert last year he took his bruises as a rookie but Courtney how much have you seen him surge here in this sophomore well season? think about how many game-winning drives he had last year three throughout what are we at week 10 he's already had four so he's wow. a big reason of why they're able to close out games and kind of turn that tide around from where they were in the same spot a year ago that the Vikings are in currently where they're constantly playing up until the last possession I think so much of it is the fact that he can read the whole field he can read defenses which you know everybody every defensive coach we asked about this week that was like one of the first things that they mentioned of just mm -hmm. how he can dissect things pre-snap that somebody who's only two years in you might not expect them to be that advanced with. And you mentioned just how versatile he is. He's a big guy with a big arm that also has some great feet as well. And Ron, in the play breakdowns we'll show right now, uh, you kind of see all that on full display. Yeah, and, and let's run the film here. What you're going to see is a guy in three separate plays that has the ability to do this. So one is the ability to move out of the pockets as soon as he felt pressure. He didn't second guess it. His receivers continue in their progressions and run the route. One, the receiver does not get depth. He comes back to the quarterback, but downhill. So that's the key there. Here, you're just going to see a guy, a coach, knowing, let's get him on the move, force the safety to have to decide. By him rolling right, the safety's thinking he's going deep. That safety picks wrong. It's a post. He, I mean, that's an absolute dagger. And that's a tight ball, tight window, and the receiver keeps running. And now here, the last part of this, I love this. You got the first progression, you got the second progression, and now he's going to go to the third guy realizing his guy failed. And now he gets the ball to him now, and he gets upfield. That's just a guy knowing, I got three hitches. I'm going to take the best matchup. And when Justin Herbert is in the pocket, his receivers all know we have to be spread out. If anybody's too close, it's going to be a sack. Or it's going to be, or sorry, interception or tip. But they, they, they're all spread out, and they're where they're supposed to be. And the Chargers have created clean pockets for yeah. Herbert. Not sacked very often this season. But this game is going to be about keeping Kirk clean as well. And for more on that, We'll have it in our player spotlight when we return here on Vikings Live. Rookie left tackle Christian Darasaw joining the set as he chats with Paul Allen one-on-one. -on -one. That's coming up next when we return here on Vikings Live.
Welcome back to Vikings Live. Brought to you by Miller Lite and Luther Auto. Well, for a few seasons now, it's felt like the Vikings offensive line has been under construction. But they have a cornerstone piece now in rookie left tackle, Christian Darrisaw. The Purple obviously hoping that he's the answer for the future on the offensive line. But here tonight to answer questions with Paul Allen, we toss it over to our player spotlight with Christian Darrisaw tonight. PA, take it away. Hey, man, thank you, buddy. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Doing great. Good. Uh, great start to the season for you. Now, through these three where you've started, do you think every game the rest of your life is going to go right down to the wire and be like overtime the rest of your life? Because that's pretty much all you know right now. No, I probably wouldn't say for the rest of my life. Um, <laughs> I know these, these past few games have been uh, difficult for us. It's like finishing as a team, but I feel like we're there. And like the rest of the way, we're not going like, to let up the throttle or anything. We're going to... Just keep applying pressure throughout the whole game, and yeah. we'll get the job done. Yeah, but you take a 30-3 to 3 win, right? Right. I mean, like where maybe Brandle or somebody gets a chance at the end of the game yeah. so you can just rest? Exactly, definitely. We'll take what, um, uh, Christian, what is your relationship like with head coach Mike Zimmer? Uh, a great relationship with Coach Zim. I uh, see him walking around the hallway or walking out to the practice field. We chat for a little bit. Um, we like defensive coach, so you really don't get to see him too much. Right. When I do see him, we chat it up. Well, if you ever wondered what he thought about you, uh, this week on X's and O's on KFAN, here's what the head coach had to say about Christian Darasaw. You watch Darasaw, you see the athleticism, obviously, and, and, and really there's no panic in him. Um, I think he's got a chance to be a really, really good player. You don't want to jump ahead too, too much, but I do feel like uh, he's got a chance to uh, solidify that left tackle position for a long time. I mean, for Mike Zimmer, three starts into somebody's career to say, I think he's going to be special, that's just, that, that's not like Zim. So clearly you've bought some leverage with him. Like if anything goes wrong or you give up a sack, you can be like, hey, man, I saw it on TV. You said I was special. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, just, I just try to go out there and just be, the, uh, be myself, really. Um, just be the best version of me. Every play is taking one play at a time, and there's no sky's the limit. Now, in Carolina, in, in the victory over the Panthers in Charlotte, Kirk to KJ at the end of the game. But, of course, it was overtime, yeah. and a bunch of plays had been run. How tired were you at the end of that game when you just kind of shoved Hassan Reddick and his seven and a half sacks right to the side? I'll probably say I was more tired, like that fourth quarter drive, um, to try to go for the game winning field goal. Uh, but once we got in overtime, I was just like juice, just like to get down there and go down there and score and end the game. Yeah. yeah. Now, now when, when people you know, compliment you for your feet, and they're like, he's very athletic, excellent uh, foot movement and stuff. Did, I mean, perchance, was there ever any dancing in in your childhood, like uh, to get your feet good? No, I don't really dancing. Uh, so I used <laughs> to play tight end in, um, in middle school. So like, uh, when I went to like do my position training and everything, it was like mainly like footwork stuff with the tight end. So yeah. like, quick feet, and I really feel like that enhanced me. Until like when I got to high school, I moved to left tackle. And, yeah. So like, yeah. Um, six five three fifteen. Mm -hmm. Being a bigger guy, are, are there any things uh, that you encounter in everyday life that are, like, difficult by being 6'5", 315? Uh, not really. Um, <laughs> I, try to, I try to just make sure everything I do can accommodate me. So, so like, getting in cars and everything? Oh, yeah. Middle scene on an airplane? Oh, no, I see. Like, I got I to gotta get the first-class flight wherever <laughs> I'm going. Uh, if, like, if it's a time that I want to go, but they don't have a first-class fight, yeah. I'll book a later flight. Yeah, but, I mean, if you're undrafted or a seventh-rounder, it yeah. might be a middle seat. Might be a little difficult for sure. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, then yeah. you got to think about it a little bit, right? I mean, he's flashing that, that first-round equity right there <laughs> with that first class. Yeah. Lastly, Brian O'Neill, one of the better right tackles in the NFL. When, when you weren't playing, how did he guide you? Uh, B.O. was there every step of the way uh, with me, uh, just, like, through that whole process. Just, like, it was in my ear, just telling me, just, like, stick with it. Uh, your time's coming. Just be like mentally, just like when you're out there not doing it, just mentally take the reps and everything just yeah. to prepare yourself. So when your time does come, that you'll just be ready. And, yeah. and that's just like my whole mindset is like being out there, uh, not being able to practice with the guys. But mentally I was there. But physically I know I wasn't. But when I got my chance, I was ready to run with it. I don't care what Ron Johnson says. I think you fit in that chair perfectly. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. <laughs> All right, Hobie, Christian Darasai, he's a good one. Yes, he is, P.A. Thank you very much for that player spotlight. Still much more to come here on Vikings Live. We take a look at Thursday Night Football at Hard Rock Stadium. The Dolphins hosting the Ravens. We preview that. In
This is Vikings Live. Brought to you by Miller Lite and Luther Auto. Well, on this Veterans Day, the NFL is continuing its Salute to Service initiative. And this year, the team honoring Pete Bursich, the Vikings color analyst and also a Vikings game day live analyst for his work with veterans. Pete has traveled overseas to meet with the troops last year here at home. He helped deliver groceries for a year to military families. Great, great work as always. And for that, he is the Vikings nominee for the Salute to Service Award. And uh, a happy Veterans Day to all the veterans out there. Thank you for your service and all that you continue to do for our country, both here at home and abroad. Time now for the Vikings' words eye view. And for that, we go to Paul Allen, PA. What are you looking for against L.A. this weekend? Amen with all that. It's a treat calling games for a decade and a half with Pete Bursich. What an honor. Words eye view, the Vikings are not a 3-6 and six team. I don't care who plays. I don't care who's in, who's out. I've seen these Chargers. Saw them a couple of years ago. I know they got a different quarterback. This is not a 3-16. and six team. The Minnesota Vikings are going to beat the L.A. Chargers with plenty of high fives at SoFi. That's your words eye view. All right, P.A., as always, appreciate it, my friend. Uh, looking at the Vikings' keys to victory as we head into this game against the Chargers, this is an L.A. team that looks completely different from the last time these two teams played. However, the Vikings went into that game and just completely ran away with it. Ron, how can they do that once again? Yeah, so <laughs> they can't do what they did at the end of the Ravens game, which is stall. So the offense, like Justin Jefferson said, they have to find ways to create big plays and use their weapons. They need to put four to five guys in these routes, let Kirk Cousins deal with the rush, and let these receivers get out there. You have more guys than they have, kind of like a fast break in basketball. Yeah, and Kirk is not really throwing the ball very far this mm -hmm. year. His average, like, you know, average right now is 6.8 yards per throw. That's the third lowest among qualified quarterbacks in the NFL. So air that thing out. Adam Thielen has the second highest contested catch rate in the NFL this season. Give him a chance. If you're seeing a too high shell, trust that your receivers are going to get open. You can throw into coverage and believe that Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen are going to come down with it. And I mean, we talked to Justin Jefferson about that today. He said it's about building trust with mm -hmm. Kirk Cousins. You'd like to think after this many games into the season, that trust is there. Clint Kubiak also said that if Justin Jefferson's coming away with nine targets and five catches in two games, that's not enough. You've got to throw him the ball more. And with only five catches, you know he's ready for more of a workload as they head to L.A. this weekend. But Tonight on Thursday Night Football, we go over to Miami, and that's where the Vikings' most recent opponent, the Ravens, are visiting tonight as they take on the Dolphins for a showdown on Thursday Night Football. The Dolphins, though, could be without Tua Tagovailoa for this game. He was questionable going into tonight, but kickoff coming up after us here on Fox 9. Taking a look at this matchup on Thursday Night Football, the Ravens, a very hot team right now, finding ways to win some games. The Dolphins, Jacoby Brissett could be the starter tonight. Who do you like tonight and why? Regardless of who starts with Miami, I was going to go Ravens anyway. Rashad Bateman is the first down machine. Lamar Jackson is an absolute <laughs> beast right now on the field. He is commanding attention, so I'm going to go Ravens. Yeah, Miami's a bad football team. I don't think that there's anything groundbreaking about saying that, but the Ravens are coming off a game where they were on for 80, the field for 80 nine plays. I mean, that's a ton. You know, what we didn't really see that taking too much of an effect the last couple weeks with the Titans having that short week and then the Colts last week. Those two games also went down to the wire. They played a lot of plays. So I still think the Ravens end up coming up with a dub in this mm -hmm. one. But they're going to be tired. All right, about 45 seconds left in the show. Some breaking news before this show. Odell Beckham Jr. joining the Rams. L.A. comes here to Minnesota mm -hmm. December 26th. Uh, what are they going to be looking for, Ron? Hopefully cold challenge. under the tree for the Rams and that it, <laughs> they create too much. I mean, I, I know I tweeted out the uh, white man can't jump with uh, Cooper Cup and Odell Beckham. So I think both guys can jump. Hope, hopefully <laughs> it does not become that where it's like he's telling him how to do something. He's getting mad at him, and Matthew Stafford can find a way to make this work. At least they're not. he didn't go to Green Bay, so you have to see him once this or is true. twice for the rest of the year, so that's good. <laughs> But it's all about the other team from L.A., and that's the Chargers. That game coming up this weekend in L.A.